If you are thinking about selling 3D models online and generate your first hundred dollars, there are a lot of things that you should know about if you don't have the necessary experience yet. If you want to stand out from the crowd, you have to be different and unique in the saturated marketplace to create what we call a competitive advantage to dominate a certain section or niche in the marketplace. This video is brought to you by Sketchfab, a platform for buying and selling 3D models online. Their store has a lot of high quality models to choose from using a great model inspector. Links in the description. Choosing your niche. Creating 3D assets based on your experience or the industry you worked in before may give you an advantage and can help you find your target customers easily. One of the most important things you need to do if you want to be successful is very simple, which is to fight the temptation of modeling anything and everything. You must choose a category in which you will keep creating as many 3D models as you can. For example, if you have chosen car modeling, characters, weapons, or anything else, keep working on similar models because this is what will help you see better results if you are good in this field. And if you want to branch out a little bit more, you can create things that are similar or related because clients who are buying from you right now will be probably interested in those categories as well. If you are completely new, you can actually test different things to see what sells better and what doesn't. Staying in your niche will help you be faster at creating new models because you don't have to learn how to research for reference images, the way you model your models, how you will texture them, and so on. You can even use the same parts from older models in new models to save time and energy since they are models that you modeled yourself and you will not have a hard time doing that. One of the signs of being one of the good sellers is when customers think of you when they want something similar to what you sell. They will be more likely to return directly to your store rather than waiting through hundreds of results in general search and that in general is called finding your niche and being very good in it. There is a very important thing that you have to avoid, which is the saturated and small categories where there is an average demand, but there is a huge amount of supply because everyone is trying to sell there. A good thing to do is to avoid the saturated categories and to invest your time modeling complex and original models that you can sell for a higher price. Quality versus quantity. This is a very important point to discuss if you want to start selling 3D models online. The truth is that if you are a beginner 3D artist who does not know a lot about the marketplace needs and his or her work is not of high quality, I recommend working on becoming a better 3D artist instead of wasting your time making things that no one is going to buy. Probably a lot of people don't know that the majority of 3D models online are not even average when it comes to their overall quality. So if you spend the right amount of time sharpening your skills, it will give you an edge when it comes to jumping to the arena of selling 3D models online. Pricing. Your pricing should not depend directly on your investment in time, money, and effort, because this is not how things work. Artists and studios that will buy your model are trying to save money, time, and effort by buying your 3D model, so you have to make sure that you will help them do that. For example, a model that takes a 3D modeler in the studio one day to finish will cost the studio about $200 on average, but you don't want to sell it for the same price because otherwise they are better off making it themselves. You want to sell it for example between $20 to $50 to save them resources and manpower, and you will make your $200 and more over time by selling your models multiple times if you are a good 3D artist. When you put your model for sale, you need to adjust your price according to the marketplace for several reasons. You have to look at similar 3D models of the same quality and determine a reasonable price for your model. This way 3D artists will make sure that they are not undercutting each other, because this will hurt the industry overall by devaluing the importance of 3D artists work. Timing. Before you start selling your 3D models, you need to take advantage of what is in high demand in this particular period of time. We mean by that the period of the year that a specific type of model or niche sales goes up. So you have to choose the period of time carefully when it comes to creating certain models. Some marketplaces also offer tools and analytics that can help you know what people are looking for. And if you can supply some high quality models to fill the demand of the market, you will probably make good money. Checking errors. One of the most important things that you should always do is that you don't publish a model until you are sure that it is error-free, even if it is a problem that doesn't affect the final renderer or the final result of the model, because it can disrupt the customer's workflow and can possibly result in a refund, or even worse, a negative review. 
to make sure that your clients are happy, it is better to make sure that models are of high quality and that buyers will not have to do the work you have done. For example, your models need to be UV unwrapped correctly because it ensures that your UV map is distortion free and arranged logically. You will save your clients a lot of time and efforts since a lot of purchase content in separate textures and tweaked to fit the client's needs. The second thing is to name the parts of the model correctly, especially layers and groups, because this will help buyers have an easy time working with your model. There are actually a few things that can waste precious time, like wading through unnamed layers and groups filled with objects named using meaningless names that don't actually refer to anything. Scene setup. You should pay attention to cameras and lights because this can help you to render and showcase your model better. Some customers want to render the model exactly as it is shown in the previews, so it is helpful for you to leave the cameras and lights in the scene so there will be no problems when it comes to what you're going to deliver and what the customer is expecting. Presentation Presentation is another key step that you need to do correctly to be an efficient seller. If you want your 3D model to stand out among the thousands of sellers out there, set aside the necessary time to make it look really good. Most people include one or two images then call it a day, but you need to go above and beyond that to make your models stand out. Take the time to set up a great studio lighting rig and follow these tips to make sure that your renderers are photorealistic because you can never give the customer too much information. Once you have a good studio rig, you can reuse it on other models. Include images from every conceivable angle, including rendering and turnable as well. Keywords, categories, and tags. To be sure that your product will appear to the target customers, don't select irrelevant keywords or categories because most marketplaces give the option to artists to choose keywords or categories that are related to their 3D models. You should always use keywords that are correctly describing the models you are selling. For the best search results, be sure that you are always using keywords that apply to the model. For example, if you are selling a kitchen sink, don't use keywords like a dishwasher. If customers are searching for a dishwasher, they are not going to buy your sink model if it shows up in the results because they are not looking for it in the first place. As with keywords, choosing the incorrect category will not help you to generate more sales as well. Poly count and vertex count. Another information that should be present is poly count and vertex count. Some marketplaces require this information to be given before the model can be purchased, and it can be a deciding factor when it comes to whether a customer will purchase the model or not. So you as a 3D modeler, you should always include this information because it is very important for the customer. File formats. You need to upload as many file formats as possible because this way you'll make sure that your offering is more versatile and will attract a wider range of customers. At the very least, always include an OBJ file and an FBX since these formats are kind of universal. Free models. From time to time, it is a good idea to give your models for free, so potential buyers who are hesitant will have a better idea about the quality of the work you do, especially if you have a professional background as a 3D artist. Reputation. Don't try to manipulate the market by using renderers that don't belong to you because false advertising usually will end up in a refund or negative reviews, and this will slowly but surely damage your reputation. Anything that is shown in the preview image should be present when the customer downloads the model. It is very important to state in your description what is and what isn't available with the downloadable files because the other relevant information can help the customer make the right decision. The two types of income. We can divide your income as a 3D modeler to active and passive income. The active one is to sell your services as a freelancer. You have to be well known so customers will come to you directly and ask you to model specific models for them. It will be exclusive to them so no one else can buy your models, but you can put it in your portfolio if you want to. Sometimes customers don't care if you sell your 3D models elsewhere, which is a great thing because this way you will hit two birds with one stone. Compared to selling 3D models, freelancing as a 3D modeler is going to be something that will pay much more in the short term. A passive income in which you upload your models to the marketplace online and wait and see whether customers are going to buy your models or not. But the good thing is you can sell them over and over again. And this is the good thing about passive income. This way you are giving buyers the models and you are collecting the money over time. 
It can be a nice secondary income if you do it right, but it is reliant on a lot of variables that can change depending on how good you are and how serious you are about selling 3D models in the first place. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, you can leave it in the comment section below. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.